Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of STEM Girls Virtual. My name is Becca, and I'm coming to you on behalf of Cincinnati Museum Center. In this series, we talk about all the amazing careers in the STEM fields. Those fields are science, technology, engineering, and math. Today, we have a very special local guest. Her name is Jessica Schmidt, and she is an anchor and a reporter for Fox 19 News. Hi Jessica, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to learn with you today. And I know that we have a lot of budding reporters and anchors uh, watching us today. So we are all excited to learn. So without further ado, let's jump in if that's okay. Sounds good. Fantastic. So the first question we have is, can you tell us a little bit more about your job? Explain to us what exactly a reporter and an anchor does at a news station. So for me, of course, I do both. So four days a week, I'm reporting, which means I'm coming up with story ideas, collaborating with managers and other reporters to figure out what story we're going to be working on that night. And then I'm researching and I'm gathering information. I'm setting up interviews and then I'm doing those interviews, working with a photographer who's shooting the video. And then I basically piece that all together. I write the story and I typically edit the story together. And then the final product is what you see on the news. On Sunday nights when I anchor, it's a little bit different. I will go into the station. I'll help the producer piece the newscast together. I'll write some stories and oftentimes I'll put together a story from the station as well. And then of course I'll go out into the studio and that's when you'll see me, you know, sitting there at the anchor desk and anchoring the news. So I'm lucky that I get to switch it up and, and do different things every week. That's awesome. And what a great combo. You know, you're getting to do you know, some artistic stuff where, you know, you're, you're writing and, and you're doing public speaking, which I kind of consider an art. And, um, but you're also researching, you're collecting data points, you're doing the technical aspects of like piecing together film and stuff like that. And I, I think that's really cool because I don't think a lot of people really understand all of what goes into what they're seeing on the screen, whether it's a newscast or um, you know a TV show or anything like that. There is so much technical stuff that does go into it. Um, so it's really cool to see this, you know, this is a different avenue of STEM and it's really interesting. So our next question is, can you tell us what sparked your interest in this field? Did you always wanna be on camera, be a news anchor? Uh, or were you, was there something different you wanted to do and you found yourself in this career? Tell us a little bit about your journey. I think for me, I didn't really realize that this was something I was interested in until my later years in high school, probably like my senior year. And essentially I realized, you know what? I have this love for writing. I love to write. I was really interested in that. I also love to perform. I was involved in theater and competitive dance team. And then I had a print journalism class that I was a part of where we put together a student newspaper and I really liked that as well. And so I tried to figure out how can I combine these different passions of mine into one. And I realized broadcast journalism is perfect because it requires writing. And of course the print journalism side gave me some basic knowledge when I was going into the field. And then it is a bit theatrical. I mean, you are performing when you're on TV every day. And so I was like, you know what, this, this is the way to go to combine my passions into one and, and really enjoy myself. That's awesome. And I think that's such a great thing to be able to do, to be able to combine so many of your passions into an awesome career. That's something that like I've been fortunate enough to do. I've been able to combine my loves of STEM and art and working with kids in the community. And uh, now I'm here and I get to talk to all of you and talk to amazing uh, guests like you. And so I think that's something that's really important to look for when you're looking to the future. Uh, think about how can I combine all the things that get me excited and make me happy and make me want to keep working and, and keep pursuing. So that's awesome that you get to do all of that um, in this career. So our next question is, what is the challenge that you faced on your journey and how did you overcome it? We're all going to face challenges in our life. We know that whether it be in school, our career, uh, personal relationships in this crazy time we're in right now even. Um, but sometimes it's helpful to learn how to overcome one of your own challenges by learning from someone else and how they overcame there. So we'd love to learn a little bit from you. Well, the news industry can definitely be a tough one. It's very competitive. And so you do have to be prepared that at least at first in your career, you probably will have to make some sacrifices 
you know, when I first started out, I did have to work a lot of weekends. I did have to work a lot of holidays and that can be hard. You know, you want to spend time with your loved ones, your friends, your family members. And when you're not able to, because you're working, that can be a challenge. But for me, I was able to remind myself that this is only a temporary situation. You know, I'm making these sacrifices today to better improve my career and my goals and accomplish my goals that is tomorrow. And so I think you just have to keep telling yourself, you know, this is going to pay off. This is going to be worth it. This isn't how it's going to be. And I'm proof of that. You know, I am blessed now to be in a position where I don't work every single holiday. I don't work every single weekend day and I feel fortunate. So you just have to keep plugging and keep working toward your goals and remind yourself that any struggles that you're facing are just teaching you to be stronger. And it's just something that you can move over and, and jump over, if you will, like an obstacle to get toward the place you want to be. That is fantastic advice. And it just further, you know, states just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not worth it. And it doesn't mean you should give in. It doesn't mean you should give up. Keep pushing. There are going to be hard times in anything that you do. Um, and if you keep working, it's, it's going to pay off and you're going to see amazing rewards. Uh, so don't, don't stop when it gets hard. Keep going. Uh, so thank you. That's fantastic advice. Uh, our next question is, what is some advice you'd like to give any young person wanting to pursue a career in, a, in any STEM field? Um, we talked a little bit about how this is, a, you know, of course, this is a STEM field. You're doing research. You're collecting data points. You're, you're using the technology of filming and, and piecing together that film and the computer technology and stuff like that. Um, so any advice for anyone who would want to pursue this kind of STEM field, but STEM in general, uh, we would love to hear anything you have to offer. Yeah, as you mentioned, of course, in my field, we are using a lot of different kinds of technology. And I would say it's always a good idea to have a diverse skill set. There is nothing wrong with knowing how to do this and how to do this and how to do this. You know, I'm able to edit on several different kinds of software programs. I'm familiar with the program we use to produce our newscast because at one point in time, I produced as well. And I think just having those different skills just helps you learn more about yourself and about the field that you're in. And when there's a manager or supervisor looking to hire, they're going to be impressed if they know that you have all these different skills and can handle and do all these different things. And it just makes you more well-rounded, I think, and, and more prepared for any field that you're in. I agree. And that was something that I even tried to pursue in college. And I, did you do the same, you know, like checking out a bunch of different interests, you know, they weren't all related, but they were fun and they were exciting. And it, I, I know for me, it definitely helped me become who I am today and made me more well-rounded. Um, I don't know if you had a similar experience in college, Jessica. Yeah, yeah. You learn a lot of different things. And I think for me, you know, I was part of our student-run television station. And so while I was a part of that, I was trying different things even there, you know, just different kinds of positions to prepare me for the field and figure out exactly what it was that I wanted to do. So I think you're spot on, you know, there's no harm in trying something new and trying different things and, and learning things because it can only benefit you, really. Exactly. Thank you for that. Uh, so we do have two more questions for you from our audience. Do you have some time to answer those? Yeah. Fantastic. So the first one is, what do you think is a good activity for kids and teens in our community to do right now in you know the situation where we can't do a lot of the things that we used to do um, or that we usually do that you know something that might help them enter this career later on get a feel for this kind of career of newscasting um, and reporting uh, anything that you can tell them to, to kind of jump on and check out sure number one of course i would say you know watch the news you know, sit down and watch a newscast, get on a news app and read the articles, watch the videos, because that's really a good way to be able to say, hey, is this something that I really want to get into? Is this something that I want to pursue? You know, when we're talking about news specifically, and of course, there are a lot of schools that do offer journalism programs. I know things are a little weird right now, but if you have an option to be a part of a program like that, that can help you at least teach you the basics it's only gonna help you get that jump start when you're moving into that career. 
And something that I don't think people may know either is you can actually set up a time to shadow a news journalist. So if there's somebody you've been watching on Cincinnati TV for years, you can try to call and, and set up a time to go and shadow them at the station where you spend a day with them. You follow them around, you see the behind the scenes uh, of what's going on, you get a tour and you just get to experience what it is they do every day. And I think that could obviously be a huge help in determining hey, is this something I really could see myself doing? That's great advice. And, and especially the shadowing part, that's across the board. No matter what the career is, whether it's in STEM or anything else, reach out to people in your community, people you may know, people you don't know. Uh, it never hurts to ask. It never hurts to reach out. And you only have something to gain. Uh, and learning firsthand and seeing what that person is doing is so helpful. Uh, so reach out to newscasters like Jessica. Re you, hey, you can reach out to me. We can hang out at my tie-dye background together. You know, it'll be fun for everybody. <laughs> there you go. So our last question is, there is so much happening in the news all the time, but especially right now. It can be really overwhelming. Um, there's a lot happening and we just wanted to know if you have any advice on how to not get overwhelmed by everything that's happening, but still stay informed because that's very important. Yeah, you definitely want to have that balance in there. And so something I always suggest is, you know, watch more than the first five, 10 minutes of the newscast. You know, you may turn it on and at first you may feel a bit overwhelmed because it's a lot of those big stories and the big things that are happening today. And sometimes it's not always good news, right? But once you get past that first five to 10 minutes, you will see that there are so many amazing things happening in our local community and our national community and all over the world. And we have stories on those things. So you can catch an inspiring story about a neighbor helping a neighbor or someone doing something amazing for someone else. And so you just have to give it that time. And I think that's how you can balance it out because then you're informed and you know what's going on. You have that information, but then you're also seeing that there's still good and there's still positive things happening. And that's always a helpful reminder that even when things feel like they're bad, there's still a lot of good. I think that's fantastic advice. It is so important to keep watching the news and it is important to acknowledge the not so good things that are happening, uh, no matter what it is. It's important to know that that's happening in your community, it's happening in the world around you. Um, and knowing those things helps you be a more informed individual. It helps you make the right choices. It helps you know what how to help those around you. and these good stories just further that, you know, being inspired by watching a story about a neighbor doing a, a amazing act of service just, you know, helps spread that, uh, that action. It's paying it forward. Um, and so we hope that even though things are crazy right now and things are overwhelming, it's okay to be overwhelmed and just keep watching and keep learning because even if it's good, even if it's bad, it's good to know. And it helps you be a better person and be a better citizen um, and be a better community member. Um, and there are some awesome things happening in our own community. Uh, so yep. seeing news stories about that is, is so great. Um, and there's so many great things that you might even be able to get involved with right now. So. Keep checking those news stories out. Thank you, that's fantastic advice. So that's all we have time for today. Jessica, thank you so, so much for joining us and talking to us about your career. It was so cool to learn with you. Um, I know that there are probably a lot of kids on, on the other side of this thinking, oh my gosh, I gotta contact Jessica. So <laughs> look out for her inbox. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and teaching us about what you do. Yeah, it was awesome. I was happy to be here and to try to help. And yeah, it was really cool. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for continuing to support, support Cincinnati Museum Center. Keep tuning into all the awesome videos we have. We have more STEM Girls Virtual. We have some history lessons. We have museum on tap. We have story tree time. All kinds of ways to engage. So keep tuning in and keep learning Cincinnati. Bye everyone.